So here we are with Dishonored 2, the much awaited sequel from the original Dishonored, released back in 2012. I enjoyed the original games, was kind of hoping that the second one was going to be quite similar and just as good. What I did find that is very similar to the point where it's pretty much just exactly the same style of gameplay and so far I've seen nothing different from it. Now it's set 15 years in the future from the original game, so Emily's no longer the little girl, she's now the empress in charge of the entire nation, with Corvo there as her main bodyguard. Corvo is now classed as her father, she is a daughter. He'll let you know this because she constantly refers to him as father, and he refers to her as daughter. Now I don't know if anyone else does this in real life, but I don't find myself regarding my children as anything else other than the first name and they certainly do not call me father. The game starts off with Emily addressing her crowd and she's getting a visit off of a duke. He then proceeds to open up a door and find out that her evil auntie, who nobody's ever heard of before, has come back to say that she is the rightful heir of the throne and creates a coup and overthrows everything. There doesn't seem to be any background to this whatsoever, she just literally walks out and goes, right, I'm in charge now, you motherfuckers, and everyone then goes, well, right, fuck it, right, we're on your side, and they start killing off all her associates and you end up with the choice of being either Corvo or Emily to continue the remainder of the game. Now depending on which character you actually choose makes absolutely no difference other than if you choose Corvo, people call you Corvo, or if you choose Emily, people call you Emily. I've found no difference whatsoever in these two characters style of gameplay, you still have the options of what equipment to use, the only main difference is when you're going around the place, whereas Corvo's wearing his mask, Emily pulls a little sheet under her nose. You still have the zoom options, Corvo gets this from his mask, Emily gets this from a telescope. So essentially, and from the player's point of view, there's absolutely no difference in the gameplay between the two characters other than their voice and the way people interact with them. As with other Dishonored games, you have the choices of the different styles of gameplay. Now you can either go through the stealth way, where rather than killing F1, you're putting them to sleep, hiding them around the corner, and taking an absolute age to complete the game. The other option is the non-stealth way where you just basically bang down doors, kick all the fuckers in and uh, make a lot of mess with blood and gore and effing all over the place. The reason being why this game is an 18, because some of it can be quite graphic. When you're inserting a sword underneath someone's skull, through their chin, into the top of their head, not really the sort of thing you want your 6 year old kid playing in the background. You also have the option of having your powers. Now if you choose to take the character as Corvo, you have them removed at the very beginning so you have to start again. So at least I've introduced the reason being why he doesn't actually have the powers rather than just saying oh yeah he's forgot them over the years. So either character can have the powers and use them as they see fit. Now depending on the playthrough is the different achievements that you can unlock on playing this game. So you can have an achievement unlock for doing it stealthily, no kills. This will then uh, give you the low chaos, or you can do the non-stealth, which is essentially just go around and ripping everyone's heads off. This will then give you the achievement for the high chaos, again the two different extremes of the gameplay. Another achievement that can be unlocked is if you're not seen throughout the entire game. I would imagine this would be quite frustrating, as there's a scene below you will see where I'm waiting for someone to actually come into the fold so I can take them out without them seeing me. If you can imagine playing the entire game on this, you've got to have a lot of time, a lot of patience to actually want to go through this. I would say this is generally really for the achievement hunters, and I wouldn't even give this a, a thought until you've completed the game on at least one playthrough first, so you know the locations of the maps, where you're going, and where the best places are to hide. On the plus side, this is Dishonored, this is a good game, it will be replayed, you'll be quite happy to go through and give it a shot on both the stealth and non-stealth options. The game itself looks impressive, there's some very nice scenery, you generally feel like you're in an actual environment, not just a tunnel that's been sort of set for you to go from point A to point B to complete the actual missions itself. Although some of the characters look like they haven't actually been worked on as much as the others, as you'll see just now. There are a vast majority who have actually had a lot of detail in them and they, they do keep up with the steampunk attitude that they had from the first game. Now being honest, I haven't played the entire game, obviously not had the chance of that, but I wanted to get this review out as soon as possible for people to realise that it is actually worth the investment for getting. Although I would fully recommend getting the collector's edition. Now, it's worth the £80 alone just for Corvo's mask. I've seen it myself, it is a very, very nice piece of kit. It's something that I'd quite happily display in my uh, collector's shelf without any problems whatsoever and I'll, that alone is worth the money. But with that you also get a digital version of the game and you also get the version of the original Dishonored. So if you are new to the franchise I would advise purchasing that and then you've got the option for playing both games. Now both games do have the repeat value of playing through, not just for the achievement hunting but to actually see if you can play them both. And overall I can see me actually sitting down and playing this for quite some time and enjoying the experience. I would say the voice acting isn't too great. Corvo sounds like he's trying to be Marcus Phoenix, just not as gruff and not as convincing. 
Overall, highly recommend getting the game. And you can head across to my website, grouchyjock.com, where you can read a full review, watch this video again, and purchase the game from there. Thanks for watching.